the Van Allen belts are impossible to travel through. You've probably heard that as proof that we didn't go to the moon, but that couldn't be further from the truth. The Van Allen belts definitely are real and they're definitely filled with ionizing radiation, but every Apollo mission that went towards the moon went through those belts without any issue. So, how is this possible? Lots of people believe things about space, astronomy, and space travel that simply aren't true. Some are fairly minor, like believing a dog was the first animal in space, and some are a bit of a bigger deal, like denying one of the largest human accomplishments to date. In this series, we're going to tackle as many of these myths as we can. We're going to cover the space basics. From the Cosmosphere, this is SpaceX. <laughs> what a dumb title. <laughs> <laughs> so what are the Van Allen belts? Well, they are bands of ionizing radiation that is trapped in the Earth's magnetosphere outside our actual atmosphere. The magnetic field of the Earth actually traps the cosmic rays and a lot of the charged particles that are coming from the sun. This ends up being mostly protons and electrons. The first band of radiation sits somewhere between 1,000 miles and 3,500 miles, and the second band of radiation sits uh, kind of between 9,000 and 12,000 miles in altitude above the Earth. Now, it seems like it would be very difficult to travel past these because you're traveling through ionizing radiation but that doesn't turn out to be the case. So ionizing radiation is any sort of radiation that is able to uh, bump electrons off of atoms. So that comes down to several different types of electromagnetic radiation and then also a lot of particle radiation. So the radiation that you find in the Van Allen belts is going to be particle radiation, mostly protons and electrons. So these are very, very, very tiny particles that are able to knock electrons off of other atoms, and therefore we call them ionizing radiation. In high enough doses, this can cause significant tissue damage to living organisms like you and me. So that means it could lead to cancer later on in life, or it could mean uh, radiation sickness in the more immediate uh, future for whoever is being irradiated. So these two large rings of radiation sit around the earth kind of like a donut. They're thinner at the north and south poles, and they're thick towards the equator. Now, the Van Allen belts are named after the person who discovered them officially in 1958. James Van Allen spent his entire career studying radiation outside the Earth's atmosphere. His studying of space actually started as early as 1946, when he was able to get one of his experiments onto a V-2 missile that was being tested out at White Sands Missile Range. Now, Van Allen's experiments were made to detect cosmic radiation, um, and the radiation that is inside the Van Allen belts does fall into that category. So the satellite that finally discovered definitively the Van Allen radiation belts in 1958 was called Explorer 1. It was actually the United States' first successful satellite. The United States and the Soviet Union were both working towards launching their own satellites. The Soviets did that first. The US tried right after the Soviets to launch the Vanguard 1 satellite, but this was ultimately a failure. The one that succeeded launched on January 31st, 1958, and it was the Explorer 1 satellite. Now what you see right here is actually a satellite that was made using the same kind of body as the Explorer 1 satellite, and it was made for different experiment packages, but this one was never able to launch. But the Explorer 1 satellite was this exact size and shape. In the payload section of the Explorer 1 satellite, James Van Allen packed a cosmic ray detector, and what he noticed in the data from his satellite was that as the satellite went around the Earth, it would have a ramp up of radiation and to the point where it would hit the limit of uh, what the detector could actually detect and then it would just drop to zero. Now this didn't sound right to Van Allen. This looks like malfunctioning equipment, but it was weird that it kept coming back on at regular intervals, very predictably. So, he theorized that these gaps of information, uh, these gaps of lost information were um, 
periods where the detector was actually oversaturated with radiation and gave a false zero reading. So he tested this on Explorer 3 by launching another cosmic ray detector. This one uh, had the same results. Every orbit, um, the radiation would ramp up all the way to the limit and then fall off entirely. He was actually able to replicate this back on Earth using a, an identical spare um, cosmic ray detector and an X-ray emitter. Um, and it had the exact same effect. So he theorized that there were bands of extremely high amounts of radiation outside the Earth's atmosphere. These were eventually named after him and called the Van Allen radiation belts. The Explorer 1 satellite uh, would continue to send signals back to Earth until 1958, and it would actually re-enter the atmosphere in 1970. First off, sorry for the plastic and the noise. We have a bit of construction going on right now. I'll make sure that the uh, B-roll is mostly from when we don't have construction going on. So at the beginning of the Apollo program, the Van Allen belts were kind of an unknown in terms of how it would be to fly through them, but it didn't actually turn out to be that big of a deal. Now that's actually for a couple of reasons. One is that the Apollo capsule is actually made of materials that can block most of the radiation that you find in the uh, Van Allen radiation belts, mostly protons and electrons. And this radiation can be stopped by pretty thin materials, including the aluminum that the inside of the spacecraft was made with. And then the heat shield on the outside of the spacecraft was also able to absorb a large amount of that radiation. So protons and electrons are, fair, are small enough radiation that it didn't actually cause that much of a concern. Additionally, the astronauts, when they were flying to the moon, they went around the bulk of the, the Van Allen belts. Um, so it wasn't a big deal there either. So they weren't exposed to the radiation that long and the radiation that did hit the capsule was mostly absorbed by the skin of the capsule itself. Now, Apollo astronauts did experience some radiation as they were passing through the uh, Van Allen belts, but it wasn't that much. Um, so each astronaut wore a dosimeter, and I have one of those right here. This one was not flown, um, but we have several unflown dosimeters in our collection. So, oop, just get this glove on. So this little white thing right here is a dosimeter and it just has a very simple uh, ticker display that says RADS right there. It counts up your dose of radiation that you experience the entire time you're wearing this dosimeter. So it's a pretty cool little device, but each astronaut was wearing one of these and they could tell exactly how much radiation each astronaut was experiencing. So different missions uh, felt different amounts of radiation on the way to the moon. But according to an article in Smithsonian Magazine, uh, which the link should be below somewhere, um, the astronauts only experienced about the same amount of radiation as uh, like two head CT scans. So it wasn't really that much. Uh, and it's an amount that's acceptable to us um, for medical treatment and things of the sort. The dosage they received was fairly small. They flew through it quickly and it wasn't a big deal. So let's recap. The Van Allen radiation belts are bands of uh, charged particle radiation trapped in the Earth's magnetic field. It was discovered by instrumentation put onto the Explorer 1 satellite by James Van Allen in 1958. And Apollo astronauts were able to go through it just fine because the Apollo capsule um, was made of materials that were able to block most of that radiation. Um, they went through it quickly and they went around the most radiate parts of it. <laughs> radiate all right. So the next time someone tells you it's impossible to fly through the Van Allen radiation belts, just tell them, nah, uh and then point them either to this video or the sources that we have in the description below. I guess that's it. Thanks for, thanks. So according to the Smithsonian Magazine, um, <laughs> Whoa. Whew, that was rough. Got through that.